we've seen that we can fill arrays with all sorts of values. We can put null in there, we can do undefined, we can put not a number, we can put a string, a regular number. We can put whatever we want. Well, not whatever we want, but out of the valid values in JavaScript, we can use them all inside of an array. We can also nest arrays inside of arrays. So here's a couple of examples of how you might do that and what it looks like. It's as simple as array brackets, and then each element could be an array. In this case, I have pairs of colors. So we have red and then crimson, purple, orchid, blue, navy blue. So the first color in each array is maybe the lighter version, and the second version or the second color is darker. It doesn't really matter in this context. Uh, once we learn objects, you'll see that most of the time we end up combining arrays and objects for more complex data, and that objects would probably help us organize this data a bit better. Because what's hard about this is looking at it, you don't really understand what is the significance of the first color versus the second. Is there an order? Well, there's the default array order, but is there a reason that red comes first or green comes before olive. But if we put that aside, the main point here is that we can store arrays inside of arrays. We could do something like animal pairs, which will be an array, and each element will be a subarray, a nested array inside. And we could just have empty arrays inside of an array. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm gonna fill it with strings. So we'll have female and male versions of animals. So we have doe for deer, and then is the male version a buck or a stag? I was never clear on that. And then we just add a comma afterwards and we can put another element like 22 if we wanted to and then true and then another array. It's just treated like any other element. But I'll do a couple nested arrays. I'll fast forward through this. There we go. So we have three arrays nested inside of one array. And let's try to access some data out of animal pairs. So I'll clear the console, refresh the page, and I have animal pairs. If we inspect it in the dev tools, you can expand each nested array. But let's start by trying to figure out the female version of peacock. So how do we get peahen out of this animal pairs array? It is in the third element of animal pairs. So 0, 1, 2, index of 2, animal pairs of 2. And that gives us this entire array. And then to access the first element, we use index of 0 and we just chain them together like this. Animal pairs two, zero. That gives us peahen. Animal pairs two, one gives us peacock. Animal pairs of, let's go with one, one, sure, gives us ram. It gives us the first portion. Animal pairs of one gives us this whole array. And then we're accessing index of one in that child array or in that nested array, which gives us ram. And we can update elements as well. Let's say uh, I was wrong about buck and it's actually stag, which I'm not sure about, but if it was actually stag, we could update it. It is the zero with element. This array is the zero with element in the main animal pairs array. And then we want to change index of one and set that equal to stag. Now we look at animal pairs and you can see that change was made. Okay, so this is still not a really good example and the reason for that is that it just doesn't really make sense. Why would you store these pairs in an order, in an array? Why is doe and buck first and peahen and peacock is third? Why is there an order? An array is usually the best choice when there is an explicit or an important order that needs to be preserved, not just random pairs of data. But it does technically work. But here is a much better and much more common example of nested arrays. Here we have a tic-tac-toe board, but you could use nested arrays to model any sort of board. A chessboard, checkers board, uh, a grid in Candy Crush, any grid. We could use two nested, or not just two nested arrays, but two levels of nested arrays. So here we have tic-tac-toe, and this graphic on the right is represented by the array on the left. So we have the first row, which is one array. 0, null, and x, or o, null, and x. I use null to represent no move being played, an empty square. And then the next row is null, x, and o, and then x, o, and null. So multi-dimensional arrays, which is the fancy term for what we're doing here, where we have arrays inside of arrays, they're really common when you're working with boards. You can continue. You could have a three-dimensional array. This is a two-dimensional array. 
You could have a three-dimensional array if you were modeling a Rubik's Cube, for example. You can continue to nest further and further. I won't spend too much time on this example because it works exactly the same as what we saw here. We're just using different data. So for a three by three board, we would have three arrays. Each element or each array has three elements itself. For a 10 by 10, we would have 10 arrays nested inside of the board, and they would all be 10 elements long. So that's pretty much it for nested arrays. The main point here is that we can put arrays inside of other arrays. We could continue and have a bunch of arrays. For example, if I was confused about buck, I could put buck and stag here. And now we have three levels of arrays, and we would access stag via animal pairs, zero. That gives us the first array this entire thing. And then I want this element, so index of 1, 0, 1. So I chain that on. And then I want the last element, which is index of 1 again. Chain that on one more time. Yep, that's it. We just continue to add square brackets over and over to access or to update information. I'll change it to stag in all caps. And I think that's a good place to stop with nested arrays.